Hello, all of you ocean lovers. I am so excited to be on an episode of Back to the Seas, Shell and Tell. Today's episode is presented in partnership with co-operators Bishop's Insurance Group. My name is Ronnie, and I'm here to talk to you today about our favorite five armed friends, the Sea Star. Now you may be wondering why I said Sea Star instead of Starfish. Well, get ready to have your mind blown, but Sea Stars aren't actually fish. I know, right? They're what we call invertebrates. And I'm going to talk to you about three different kinds you can find right here in Nova Scotia. The first one I'm going to introduce you to is the Blood Star. Now don't worry, it's not a vampire sea star or anything. It simply gets its name for the deep, rich red color, of which you'll find many of them. They're very smooth to the touch. And blood stars are filter feeders, meaning they just kind of wait around and the food comes to them. Blood stars are very good parents. While most sea stars release their eggs off into the water on their own, blood stars take careful attention to raise them all the way up until they hatch. And when they hatch, they are the cutest, littlest, just baby versions of the adult sea star. It is extremely adorable. Next up is the common sea star. Now, they're still interesting despite being called common. And they're probably one of the largest sea stars you're going to find around here. If you touch them, they're quite bumpy. And they're also the best chefs of a muscle smoothie anywhere in the ocean. Now, what I mean by that is that common sea stars are the predators to blue mussels. Blue mussels are the shelled creatures you often find on the side of docks or rocks, and they open and close like this. So, a common sea star will come upon a blue mussel and think, hmm, tasty lunch and it will wrap itself around the muscle and squeeze so tight and for such a long time that eventually the muscle will open its shell just even a little bit and that is the opportunity. The sea star then ejects its stomach from its mouth and then externally digests the muscle contents, turning it into a muscle smoothie. I think I'll pass on that one. I've saved my favorite for last, the Brittle Star. Brittle Stars get their name because of their long and flexible limbs, which are often subject to breaking, but don't worry, they can grow them back. Because of these long and flexible arms, they are super fast, like probably the fastest sea star out there. They can crawl along the ocean floor with ease, going over rocks and sand, you name it. Brittle stars are also filter feeders, like the blood star, but they have a unique way of going about it. They lie upside down and use their arms to bring food to their mouth. And it's kind of just like licking your fingers after you eat a bag of cheesy chips. So thank you so much for tuning in to hear about how amazing sea stars are. I hope you get a chance to see one in person very soon. Bye for now.